Ah, uh, yes. Welcome, everyone. Cannabis News with Joe Claire for August 1st, 2018. A new month here at Cannabis News. Of course, presented by the Marijuana Times. As always, check out marijuanatimes.org. Click that video tab to find the show. Check out the articles, our social media networks, all that stuff. Make sure you subscribe to us. Search the Marijuana Times on YouTube, Vimeo, and Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts, of course, the audio-only version of the show. If you want the video, well, obviously, marijuanatimes.org, YouTube, or Vimeo. Today, we're talking about Oklahoma and uh, possible recreational legalization in Oklahoma. I know things are moving quick there. There's a lot of stuff going on in the state. We'll talk about that coming up. Also, uh, Michigan, what's going on in Michigan, the fundraising on both sides, the opponents of marijuana legalization, the proponents of marijuana legalization. That's going to be voted on in November of this year in Michigan. And we'll also look at a video from Smart Approaches to Marijuana. I normally don't uh, talk about that group, and I'll tell you why, and I'll show you the video, and tell you why I'm showing the video and talking about them today. All of that is coming up. But first, of course, Cannabis News is brought to you by NatureSide, nature-side.com. Check out the organic, all-natural pesticides. They're a proud sponsor of the show. If you're a cannabis cultivator in a state where it is legal, you want to be co- you want to be a regulatory compliant, you want to use harmful chemicals, you don't want to use banned pesticides, you want to check out NatureSide, nat- uh, nature-side.com, site is spelled C I. DE grow safe and poison free with nature side and be regulatory compliant in the state you're growing in. Make sure you check out nature side. Proud sponsor of Cannabis News. This first story comes to us. Julia Granowitz over at marijuanatimes.org. Oklahoma activists meet signature goal for recreational marijuana petition. Uh, Green the Vote just announced they have reached their signature goal with hopes of putting recreational cannabis on the November ballot in Oklahoma. <clears throat> Excuse me. The group collected a little over 132,000 signatures, which they turned in on July 29th. They need 123,724 for state question 797 to qualify for the ballot. Now, first of all, if you're thinking that's not much of a gap, 132,000, 123,000, it's not. We'll talk about that in a second. First, the ballot initiative, if passed by voters, will allow adults 21 and older to legally possess, use, grow, and sell marijuana. State question 797 will also allow cannabis to be classified as an herbal drug. And would have it regulated by the Oklahoma Cannabis Commission. Unlike question 788, the medical marijuana bill that passed in June in Oklahoma, this would be a constitutional amendment. Now, even if they do meet their signature goal, um, it's been uh, Secretary of State James Williamson said, I can't say it's impossible. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's extremely unlikely that they'll be able to get the, uh, they would have enough time to get the signatures validated and still get recreational marijuana on the ballot. In 2018, they'll probably have to wait till 2020, the same way in which medical marijuana had to wait from 2016 to 2018 in Oklahoma to be passed. So that's one problem. Even if they do have no valid signatures, it's probably not going to be on the ballot this year. The other problem is what I just mentioned. They have 132,000 signatures, they need 123,000. So if you add them up, there's, they're a little under 9,000 above the limit. That's not a lot of leeway. That means less means if more than 9,000 signatures are considered invalid, then they don't have enough. When it comes to ballot measures like this, usually uh, you want to have quite a bit of a, a buffer, you know, maybe like a, like a third above what you need. To do that here, they would need at least another, you know, 30,000 signatures to get close to that mark. So it doesn't look like they're going to have enough valid signatures, but if they do, they're not going to have enough time to get it on the ballot. They may have to wait till 2020. But um, so in other words... Like I said, things are moving fast in Oklahoma. There's all kinds of stuff swirling around the medical marijuana problem. We'll bring you updates on that uh, in the coming weeks as they try to work through what they have going on in Oklahoma. There's just a lot going on, but I don't think recreational marijuana is going to be one of the things they have to worry about this fall. Uh, But if it's on the ballot, hey, good for them. I will be here telling you about it on Cannabis News. This next story from Freep.com, the Detroit Free Press. Campaign for Legal Pot in Michigan off to a slow start in terms of fundraising, but so are opponents of legal marijuana in Michigan. Neither side has raised much money for the upcoming election, submitting second quarter campaign finance reports that looked more like a legislative race rather than a major initiative that could bolster or kill the budding marijuana industry in Michigan. Healthy and Productive Michigan, which is a political action committee formed to oppose the proposal, raised just 1651 and its major donors, Smart Approaches to Marijuana, which we will talk about here uh, coming up. Uh, The Alexander, Virginia group that supports medical marijuana but not recreational marijuana, that's not really, hasn't kicked in any more money to the campaign since its initial donation of $275,000. 
The Antipod Group has $67,000 available for cash uh, for the campaign. Um, the um, Coalition to Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol, which is spearheading the effort to legalize marijuana in Michigan for adult use, also said the group's fundraising is just starting to heat up. The group has raised more than $1 million, including 113789 in the second quarter. But the bulk of that cash was used to pay a company to gather petition signatures needed to get on the November ballot. So basically both sides in Michigan are saying that the, the, the fundraising the fundraising is just getting going. Uh, they have three months now, a little over three months now, until Michigan voters go to the ballot to vote on recreational legalization. So we'll bring you more about that story. As it continues throughout the fall, the fundraising, polls, whatever, but uh, a big battle over recreational marijuana uh, shaping up in Michigan for this fall. Now, uh, we just mentioned smart approaches to marijuana. And as I said, I don't talk about Sam very much, smart approaches to marijuana, mainly because they're relevant. They're one of the most, they are the most vocal, most visible of the pro-prohibition groups that are out there, the groups that are still fighting marijuana legalization. They say they're for medical marijuana. They say they're for uh, rehab as opposed to jail, but not really. Even decriminalization proposals, they don't, they're not for. They don't get behind. So they're, they're a prohibitionist group, basically. Now, the reason I don't talk about it much is I don't want to give them a lot of publicity because they are, to me, they are irrelevant. They are, I don't know what analogy you, you want to use, um, uh, dropping the bucket, they're uh, peeing into the wind, whatever. But they are a small speed bump on the way to full nationwide legalization. In 10 years, nobody's going to know who these people are. They're uh, not successful. They have they had zero, almost zero success at all in stopping the, the momentum of re recreational legalization, even medical marijuana legalization. They do have a lot of money behind them. And that's why I want to play this video for you. They put a video on YouTube about their brand new New York offices. They're so very proud of their New York offices. They can't stop marijuana legalization in any state. Uh, they've had, they have no momentum whatsoever when it comes to policy, uh, affecting policy or any of that, but they do have money. And so they have brand new offices in New York. So they go, they show off their new offices in New York. I show you this for a couple of reasons, even though they're irrelevant, even though success, they're not, they have no success policy wise. They are fundraising a lot of money. They have big donors behind them. Uh, they have money for offices and big salaries and traveling around the country, making these dumb speeches about how, you know, marijuana is big tobacco 2.0 because their, their, their thing is trying to tie marijuana with tobacco and get the people who fear tobacco and the lies big tobacco told for many years and to transfer that to marijuana, even though they're two completely different substances, one is eminently more dangerous than the other tobacco, of course, more dangerous than marijuana. But they try to make that connection in people's heads and they try to act like, you know, big marijuana money's coming in and they're going to lie and they're going to get your kids hooked on marijuana. <clears throat> All the reefer madness crap, basically, that, that has been destroyed by the advent of the internet and uh, groups like MPP and, and Normal and Drug Policy Alliance and Students for a Sensible Drug Policy and, and uh, 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 Safe Access, Americans for Safe Access. All of these groups have spent decades destroying these myths and the the big tobacco 2.0 is just a really weak selling point that not a lot of people are going to go for. But again, as evidenced by this video, uh, Sam has a lot of money and they make a lot of money making their little speeches and they have, uh, you know, their staff and they're all, they're all doing great. They've had zero policy successes and they'll continue to have zero policy successes. They're not going to stop marijuana legalization in any way, shape or form, but they do have a cool new office in New York. Check this out. Yeah, New York Sam. is one of the greatest cities in the world, and it made sense as Sam is expanding to be here really in the center of finance, culture, uh, and all the things that are going on. By the way, that's Kevin Sabet talking. Uh, very, very proud of their expanding. Sam is expanding in the face of zero success, legislatively or policy-wise. They are expanding to their, their fancy new offices in the heart of New York City. On in this great city. Well, we're going to be getting a lot more aggressive on the local and state level here in New York and elsewhere. So we're going to be working with local elected officials, community organizers, social workers, physicians, researchers in the area. New York is home to some of the world-class research institutions doing cutting-edge research on marijuana and its cannabinoids. We're going to be working with all those folks uh, to really make sure we not only have a safe and productive city, but, but also for the country. Being part of our growing team is a truly exhilarating experience. We have some of the most 
most incredible professionals um, in the field that are working under our roof. As legalization has spread among a few states around the country. A few. A few. Recreational is nine states. Full-blown medical marijuana of some forms over 30 states now. You throw in CBD, we're talking over 40 states. But just a few states, you know, is, uh, is past legalization. We're really trying to downplay the abject failure that Sam is. We've gotten more support as people are waking up to the idea that this actually does affect them. And this is one where he pretends that, you know, a bunch of, you know, small town people who are afraid of marijuana legalization are giving to Sam when in fact it's just a few big donors, most of whom run rehab centers uh, because Sam is big on forced rehab when it comes to uh, marijuana. People are caught with marijuana. Everywhere you go, you smell it. You smell it everywhere, right? Everywhere. Big marijuana is not based on Madison Avenue quite yet, but their investors are just down the street from our office in Wall Street. And Big marijuana. What gets me about this is these, these guys are so proud of what they're doing. Like they're on some kind of mission to criminalize or force into rehab people who are not infringing the rights of anyone else. They act like they're heroes. They're heroes. They're doing such good work and keeping people safe and all the other garbage that we've been fed by prohibitionists for decades. That's why these people are so irrelevant. They are failures, absolute failures. And the people are giving money to this garbage. Well, this is what you're buying. You're buying uh, swanky new offices and, and dumb videos. And we're set up in New York to remind them that we're not going to let them get away with what Big Tobacco got away with for almost a century. And there it is. Tying to uh, Big uh, big Tobacco, Big Tobacco 2.0, they like to call it. Um, we're, we're here to remind them, you know, that we're not going to let this happen. Marijuana legalization? You're not going to let it happen? He's not going to let marijuana legalization happen. Well, I guess we should just pack in our bags. I'll end this show today. We'll take down the Marijuana Times, marijuanatimes.org. We'll erase all of it. We'll delete all of it. MPP, normal, SSDP, Americans for Safe Access, Drug Policy Alliance, they all need to close up shop because Kevin Sabat opened an office in New York and he's not going to let big marijuana or big tobacco 2.0 get away with it. It's sad. This man is sad. His group is sad. And uh, as I said, there will be, if they are even mentioned in the history of legalization, how it came about, there will be a footnote, a small speed bump in what is a march towards giving people back their freedom. I don't care what you say about marijuana. I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care if it smells all over New York City. Oh, boo-hoo, it smells like weed in New York City. I mean, I guess it's not as good as like rats or garbage or feces or B.O. God forbid, oh, it smells like marijuana in New York City. Oh, God, let me get out my tiny violin. Here's my, here it is, my tiny violin. They are useless, useless people. The people. They're donors. You're throwing your money away. But keep doing it. Keep throwing. Give all the money you want to Sam. I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Open offices in every city. Have many staff members. Make dumb videos. Make speeches. Tour. I don't care. There's nothing Kevin Sabet and Smart Approaches to Marijuana can do to stop the momentum of marijuana legalization. There's just too many of us. There's too many cannabis users. There's too many people who believe that if you don't infringe on the rights of anyone else, you're not a criminal. It is not going to happen. You're going to stop nothing. Hell, in New York alone, Andrew Cuomo's moved from, I hate marijuana, and there's no way it's going to be legalized, to, hey, let's change some policies. Let's look into this. Let's do some studies. Maybe we should uh, do something about this. Cynthia Nixon, who's running for governor of New York, talking about marijuana legalization. Uh, the mayor of New York uh, relaxing uh, uh, searches for people when it comes to marijuana. Even in the city that they're setting up shop in, what they're doing is not working. And it's really pathetic. But I did want you all to see that this is what the opposition is doing. They're opening up new new offices and they're just they're trying to put a face on failure, like, hey, we're successful. We're gonna we're gonna stop this big tobacco 2.0 and we got this handled when in the end they'll do nothing. Absolutely nothing to stop the momentum of legalization. Too bad. Couldn't happen to a nicer group of uh insufferable people. We'll continue to cover all this, of course, on Cannabis News. Thank you to NatureSide, nature-side.com, the organic, all-natural pesticides. Keep liking, sharing, commenting on the videos. Uh, maybe someday I'll do this show from just a nice big new office. From <laughs> I don't really doubt what I'm doing here. Make glossy videos and dumb speeches and all that crap. But until then, I'll be here doing this show. Like I said, keep spreading the word. Subscribe on YouTube. Like, share, comment. Thanks, everybody, 
for checking out the show, and we'll see you next time on Cannabis News. (laughs) 